Welcome back to another video from Relative Security. Today we're going to talk about threat intelligence life cycle. This is our fourth video in the series of cyber threat intelligence. So why talk about cyber threat intelligence life cycle? As we all know that the organizations where whatever industry they are coming from, they need to improve their visibility and understanding of the adversary their motivations, their capabilities, and the attack surface of their organization. Because if they need to defend their organization, they need to understand who is attacking them and from where they are being attacked. But the question is, how do they do it? There's a lots of information available, but they need to start from somewhere in such a structured way that they can achieve their objectives. The objective is same to defend your organization. That is where your, <clears throat> sorry, that is where your six steps process framework that has been defined comes in. So what is this? This intelligence life cycle is a process to transform the raw data into a finished intelligence. So that finished intelligence, as we have already talked about, is important for the decision makers to decide based on that finished intelligence for the defense of their organization. So this provides a guidance to the cybersecurity team for the development and the execution of their information, the finished intelligence that they have acquired. This intelligence cycle provides a complete framework which enables the teams to optimize their resources and effectively respond to the rapidly changing the landscape of the threats. So why is it in a circle? It's a process that starts from the requirements. It has six steps and provides a finished intelligence product. However, that product can be the starting point for several other requirements, can initiate many other requirements, many other needs for the intelligence. That is why it's in a circular uh, way where one product can lead to more requirements and that the process starts again. So there are different steps the planning and direction, collection, processing, analysis, and dissemination, and the feedback. So we'll start with the first one, that is planning and direction. So before we talk about the planning and direction, the first thing that we need to talk about is the intelligence requirements. What is intelligence requirement? Intelligence requirement is the bare layout of what exactly is required. This is very crucial to the threat intelligence lifecycle because it will set the roadmap for a specific threat intelligence operation. So now during this process, the whole planning and direction, you need to understand the whole process that we are going to follow. What is it for? So that would be your intelligence requirements. It could come from anywhere. It could be coming from your uh, higher ups, the higher management, when they want to know that what is the risk level of your current um, uh, operations. Uh, let's say it could be from the SOC where they want to know about a specific IP or a specific threat actor. So the first thing that you will do is once you receive the intelligence requirement, you will refine that intelligence requirement and identify that what is the focus of that intelligence requirement and what is expected. So what you're doing is you have a requirement and you are now trying to understand that what is the objective behind this intelligence requirement? What exactly is the client asking me? What information does it need? For example, the team may focus on who the attackers are, what are their motivations, around this intelligence requirement. Then what is 
the current capability of our organization and secondly the team will analyze that do we have access to the qualified data sources to get the answers for that particular intelligence requirement do we have a predefined process which currently we are talking about which lays out the steps that how we will collect the data from where we are going to collect it we have to analyze it do we have the necessary tools and information available and then do we have a streamlined process for it so that is where you are doing your housekeeping that we have an intelligence requirement but do we have enough resources to answer that intelligence requirement based on this now you have defined your direction where you have a clear idea what is required and what is the way forward to achieve the answers to your intelligence requirements the second step in this process would be the collection collection is once the requirements are defined though now the team has to collect the information to answer those requirements to meet those objectives so it could be now any information but it will be depending on the requirement of your um, uh, the intelligence requirement that you have received based on that you will decide what are the log sources that i need to collect for example what is the information is it going to be what is the information source from where i need to get that information and answer those questions that is where you are deciding that what exactly are you collecting then from where will you be collecting is it going to be the open source collection for example from the social media or the news or the blog or the open forums or is it going to be confidential source collection for example internal infrastructure it could be the incident reports incident reports that you faced or it could be publicly available incident reports or your partners or it's going to be from the threat intelligence platform that you are already using so this is now where you are deciding the collection of the information now you are collecting information you are collecting raw data that is all um, because there is a range of sources that you you can collect from this you have to decide so the gathering necessary data and the information that will meet the needs of your intelligence requirements and good planning and direction definitely is going to lead to the collection of quality data the next step is once you have gathered the data is processing so how would you process it you need to sort it you need to organize it with the metadata tags and filtering out the redundant information where the duplicate information is available you have to remove it so that you have a very refined information available that you can process then definitely if you are getting the raw data or the information from different sources you have to consolidate the data across different formats just so that you know that okay these are my ips these are my domains these are my other information this is my contextual information so that the analysis or the process is quite easy for you so the data and information the data and information collected are managed using information management process the data to shape it in a way which is suitable for analysis because you are now preparing your data which you have already collected in such a way that when the analyst starts analysis he has in a very structured format the data is available there is no duplicate data all the false positive or the um, uh, not needed context has been removed the relevant context the relevant scoring of indicators are present and now it could be the processing could be manual or automated based you can use threat intelligence platforms as well for your processing so at the end of the processing of your data we would assume that you have stored the data in such a way that the during the analysis this data can be used to its maximum potential you might have created the data visualizations the graphs the workflows for automated matching and decision making and 
all the data is ready to be analyzed. The next process is analysis. So once you have the data, the process data available, the next step is analyze that information and try to find the answers to your intelligence requirements. All the process data and the evaluated information has to be mapped according to the context environment and you have to produce now an action-oriented finished intelligence. Why action-oriented? Because all this analysis, the process, the planning has to be done to enable your user to take an action based on your analysis, based on your threat intelligence product that you are going to provide them. What are the considerations that you have to do? The analysis should focus on certain aspects, but it should depend on the requirement of that was raised at the start. It can take some time to search for the potential security issues and notify that the relative notify the relative relative teams in a format that fulfills the intelligence requirements that we have already set at the start of the planning and direction phase. One thing to take care of is the cognitive bias, that is the confirmation bias. The confirmation bias is something, for example, when the analysis, or sorry, when the analyst is already has already made a conclusion based on his previous um, thinking based on his previous uh, pre-existing pre conclusions, that is something that will um, undermine your analysis. You have to use, for example, structured analytic techniques that are common now and use, used in cyber threat intelligence to counter this confirmation bias. For example, if I am looking at the alerts that are being generated from the processed data, and I see that there is an IP that I see daily. And for example, I thought it was clean and I closed the alert. The next time, if I see that IP again, it's not necessarily uh, that it was still a benign IP. It could have been used separately. But if I fell into the trap of this cognitive bias, confirmation bias, I will close that alert out, considering it as false positive. So we have to use the structured analytic techniques to counter this um, cognitive bias. The analysis can be automated using threat intelligence platforms or other platforms, or it could be manual. But the main thing is the output should be actionable. Now you have analysis. Now you have a final product. You have a, re um, a report that is ready. Who do you send it to? The first would be that you translate those analysis into an understandable format of the relevant for the relevant stakeholders. The report is ready. Now send it to the, the one who raised the intelligence requirement. Secondly, to other consumers who for which it can be useful. For example, it could be your SOC team, it could be your risk analysis team, or any other. It could be your clients. What are the reports that you share in the threat intelligence? It could be daily report when you're sharing the current happening in the threat landscape. It could be weekly reports, summarized ones, or the monthly reports, what happened during the whole month. Uh, this is dependent on your organizational um, processes. What is the frequency that you want to set and through which forum you want to send? It could be an email. It could be you want to release it on the website or definitely at the forums. The last would be the feedback. When you are sharing your threat intelligence with your clients who raise the information request, you have to be uh, open to the feedback, for example, to know that are you on the right track and you are providing the valuable service to your stakeholder. Uh, for example, the time that you took to analyze and process that information, during that time, the priorities of the customers have changed or not? Are there other requirements that they raised, are they still relevant to their operations? 
And uh, based on this, you can decide that how much time do you need to spend on your analysis and everything. Then uh, the reports that you're sharing, are they useful to them? And if there are any other intelligence requirements for which you need to start from the planning and direction uh, and uh, redo the whole process. And that is the whole um, point of the feedback to understand that what's next and how are we adding value? Can we improve? Can we change something? So these, this is the intelligence life cycle that is very important to understand when you're uh, reading about the cyber threat intelligence. Um, and there's another um, um, a video that we will be doing regarding the types of threat intelligence. Now, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and thank you so much for your patience.